Sligo is a very, very creative place and it's where creative people come. But loads of people just come here because it's a great place to be. It's full of artists. If you pick up a stick and chuck it, you'll probably hit a musician or an artist. They're hand printed, which is the main thing, mainly to look like an old map. Now, having a very old map is one thing, but having maps that have new information on them is another thing. Now, all of these, uh, the information on the maps is predominantly modern. So that's kind of the difference with my maps and other maps. My name is John Cullinan. I'm from England, but my family's from Sligo and uh, I moved here more or less around about 2000. For me it was just a great place to live, the great quality of life here and so on, you know, great crack as they say, and made loads of friends and uh, while I was here I continued my long uh, relationship with map making. I'd already been mapping before so I just continued the mapping by uh, starting to map the west of Ireland. The reason that I made maps in Ireland is because during the Celtic Tiger years, things were growing so fast that the people didn't recognise them anymore. So for instance, uh, in 1992, I mapped Cork City. I wasn't living in Ireland at that stage. I had to come to Ireland for three months. And I mapped Cork City and 22 towns in Cork and brought out the, the Cork Guide, basically. You know? So for instance, uh, that was a commission. Cork and Curry Tourism approached me. Well, I approached them with the idea and then they came back to me and they ordered 5,000 maps. So I made a tidy little profit. I mapped Sligo in 1992 the first time and I brought out the first map and guide to uh, Sligo, which there had never really been one before. And uh, I sold 5,000 copies to the tourist office. And then over the years I did further versions of that and further versions of other maps. But uh, in recent years, I've concentrated more on making uh, dip sheet maps. So this is my uh, this is my favourite map, and it's the one that people seem to like most. And it's called the Pubs of Sligo Town Centre. It's got pictures of all the pub fronts, and it shows the pubs uh, that were open prior to the pandemic. So I made a note here saying that in 1998 Sligo had 104 pubs, by 2008 there were 52 and prior to the Covid lockdown, 27 public houses and bars. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's quite a nice map, it's one of my favourite ones because it's quite decorative and it has information as well, you know. Absolutely stunning job. Thanks, nice see you say so. Just fantastic. What would you think about maybe putting it somewhere up here? Looks good to me. How's that? That's very nice. That's a kudos that it deserves from both here, looking into the pub here. So the certainly with Hargadens, you know, ye old Irish pub, 153 years, uh, has walls uh, that are covered with uh, memorabilia, uh, with regards to some of the wines and spirits and uh, merchant wares that would have been sold in the pub. But in recent years, we've allowed the walls to tell some different stories. Uh, we've had some uh, fascinating characters uh, across the threshold here. You know, we have created uh, a very careful and carefully curated collection of photographs and stories on the walls. And I think they tell the story of the pub. I suppose, in a way, very much the story of the town. And to make it in Harvard, it's like, you know, it's a great achievement for me. For me, maps are, as a traveller, because I've travelled all over the world and gone to places and I like getting involved, making a map is a way to get involved. And especially I like the idea of actually going somewhere and getting to know it a little bit, rather than just from the tourist perspective. So know every street and every alleyway. If I go to a place and make a map, it's not enough for me just to draw the map based on other people's maps. I need to go out there and check the information. 
I have a folding bicycle with a magnet on the wheel and basically I can measure distance and then I have a, a lens at it compass. It's actually a ship compass that I can hold to my eye and I can take an accurate reading of the angle. So basically I just ride around all the streets and I measure angle distance, angle distance, angle distance. Then I draw it onto the computer and then I turn it into a graphic. One thing that people seem to like a lot is the look of these maps. And like I said, it's because they're hand printed. The designs I've created on my computer, I send to a company in Sheffield, and they send me back laser cut rubber stamps. I ink them up, roll it on, it's quite straightforward really. And the end result, the look is of an old map. They're just one color. They're easy to read, the paper's good quality, they look good. So I'll look in maps that have new information. Another thing, I put a stamp on the bottom, an embossed stamp, which says John the Map. That's something else that people like. I think it's a nice touch. I've got a few fresh off the press, would you believe? There's all sorts here. I've got Donny Gaul, uh, Spanish Armada, oh, the Clans of Ireland, that's the this is one of all the family names in Ireland. Uh, this is actually my Pride and Joy, which hasn't even been printed yet. This is my piece de resistance. This is my masterwork. This is Finta Nacheren, and it has all the family names of Ireland within each county. As you can see, it's littered with mermaids and ships, and just to make it decorative. Oh, well, this is the counties now. We've got the County Leacham, County Roscommon, this one's got Kathy Jordan playing the guitar, a woman from Scrimog and plays with Dervish, and I've put her in there because she's almost like the patron saint of Roscommon. Uh, the Wild Atlantic Way, this is the surf coast, which is like a litre of mayo. So once again, more mermaids than you can shake a stick at. Uh, Strange Hill and Calera, and Ross's Point, the two main resorts of Sligo. Plus another mermaid here, there's plenty of mermaids. It's littered with mermaids. So it's, it's a labour of love. I've been coming to Sligo all my life. I think I first came here in about 1958, I was only two years old. Basically, Sligo was always a sort of uh, another world for me, you know, compared to London, because it was relatively, uh, life was more simple here and uh, and there was, uh, there was something larger than life about the Irish characters I knew here. It is a great place to live because the music scene is so good, there's so much art, there's so many very pleasant people and we're surrounded by some of the most beautiful landscape in Ireland. It opens out into the Atlantic and you've got Ross's Point and you've got Strand Hill and you've got the glistening water. It's just fabulous.